Good morning. It's so good to be able to be with you again this morning. I'm thankful for the privilege of our sharing together in the Word of God Sunday by Sunday. I'm also so thankful that in these unusual days, we're able to stay in touch by texting, also our Sunday school classes are doing their work so faithfully Sunday by Sunday. I'm so grateful for that. Also, I can't thank you enough for your financial faithfulness. You've been right there and giving week after week, and so that's so wonderful. But what really gets me is how much you have given for the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Ellen Dewberry was by this week, and we were looking at the fact that you have given over $6,000. Ellen says, as far as she's concerned, we have met that goal. So thank you for your faithfulness to missions. Also, I'll be forever grateful to Amy White and her kindness to come each week and video the message, and she has assured me as long as we need to do this, she's happy to do it. I'm so thankful. It appears that may be for a while, and so then she is faithful to do that, and we'll keep sharing God's Word each Lord's Day. You bow with me now, please, as we pray. Father, thank you so very much for today, for the privilege of being together in worship wherever we might be. Thank you for your touch of grace, for loving us and providing your sustaining strength during these trying times. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning I'd like to share a, a passage of Scripture that's one of my favorites and something that I like to refer to all along because the truth of it is so applicable for all of us. In James chapter 4, verses 13 through 17, James writes, Now listen, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, Carry on business and make money, while you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. COVID-19 has surely changed everything about our country. There have been some positive things, though, that have come, some positive changes. I've heard many people say they've enjoyed having their evening meal together with their family. They have sat around the tables more at night and eaten and enjoyed conversations. and had that time together as families. So that's a good thing that's occurred. Also, it seems that People are talking more with each other because of the changes that have occurred. People have time to talk with each other and spend some time, and that's a very positive thing. COVID-19, though, has also made us think about the frailty of life. It raises the question for all of us, what are we doing with the life God has given us? Who would have thought three months ago that our whole nation would be changed so completely, that we'd be shut down in so many ways. The truth is, we can be here one moment, and then we're gone. In light of COVID-19, let me suggest some ways that we can use life wisely. We can use life wisely by loving God with all that we are, and making him the center of our days. It really is urgent for us to commit ourselves and yield our hearts to God. God needs to be the center of our lives so that we organize everything around our relationship with God. I read about a man who bought a beautiful painting, and he asked the famous artist Whistler if he would come help him hang it at his house. When Whistler got there, the man had the beautiful picture, and he was putting it in various places in his house, trying to decide the right place to hang it in this room. Finally, Whistler said to him, you've got it all wrong. What you need to do is to move your furniture out of this room, then put the picture where you want it. After you put the picture where you want it, then bring your furniture back in and arrange the furniture around the picture. That is a perfect example of making sure God is the center of our lives 
and then organizing our whole lives around him. If we make sure God is the center of our lives, then life will be okay for us no matter what happens. There's nothing more important than our being yielded to God and walking with him every day. If there's anything in your life that is more important to you than walking with God, I urge you, wake up, make adjustments, so that more than anything else, you want God in the center of your life. In our culture, there are many voices calling for us of how to live. Let me urge each of us to pay attention only to one authoritative voice, the voice of God. If we listen to God and do what he tells us, we'll be okay. The captain of a ship noticed some dim lights in the horizon. He had his flagman to signal, alter your course 10 degrees south. Quickly, a light came back, alter your course 10 degrees north. Now, this pretty well irritated this captain because he was not accustomed to someone disobeying his orders. So he had his flagman to signal back, alter your course 10 degrees south. I am the captain of this ship. Quickly, the flagman signaled back, alter your course 10 degrees north. I am seaman first class Jones. Now, this really angered the captain, so he decided he would really scare this person, and he signaled back, alter your course 10 degrees south. I am a battleship. Quickly, the signal came back, alter your course 10 degrees north. I am a lighthouse. The lighthouse wasn't going anywhere. The ship had to make adjustments. So in our culture, I would urge each of us, Make sure God is the center of our lives, that he is our lighthouse. If we do that, then we'll be okay regardless of COVID-19. We can use life wisely by living under God's unchanging moral standards. It is astounding to me how easily we forget God's standards. Today, people live under the illusion. They can just do as they please. God is irrelevant. God's word doesn't matter. Now, 50 years ago, people were sinning against God in the same way we sin against God today. The difference, though, was when people sinned against God, they knew there were certain behaviors that were not acceptable to God. That's all changed today. Now, people pay no attention to the moral absolutes of God Believing that everything is relative, they can do whatever they please, anytime they please, and it's all right. Indifference to God's moral standards is mind-boggling. While COVID-19 is a serious concern to our country, wouldn't it be something? If this could cause people to wake up and to realize their need to know God and to be submissive to God's moral absolutes. The Bible is God's Word. It is unchanging in its truth. Its values will never change. It is God's Word. In January of 1996 in Nashville, Tennessee, 4,000 baseball coaches gathered for an annual convention at Opryland. One of the keynote speakers for those 4,000 baseball coaches was a man by the name of Coach John Skolinus. John Skolinus at that point was 78 years of age. He had retired five years earlier as a college baseball coach. As people began to realize that Coach Skolinus was going to speak, there was genuine excitement because his reputation was tremendous as a coach. Finally, it came time for him to, to speak, and so he made his way to the platform wearing just a simple outfit. But he had a string around his neck that had a, a home plate around his neck. It was the home plate that, where the catcher uh, stood and the, and the batter stood to bat. 
when he got up, he began to talk. He talked about 20 minutes. And after a while, there was sort of a little snickering among the coaches as they thought, what is he doing? Has he lost his mind? What's going on with him? He has this string around his neck and a, a, a stark white home plate hanging around his neck. So finally, Coach Scullinus said, I'm sure you're wondering, have I lost my mind or maybe I've escaped from a mental institution? I'll assure you I haven't. So he held the baseball plate up in front of him and asked, are there any Little League coaches here? Well, quickly, many hands went up. He said, how wide is a plate, a home plate, in Little League baseball? 17 inches, someone said. So in a little while he said, well, I wonder when Babe Ruth played baseball, what was the width of a home plate then? Are there any Babe Ruth coaches here? How wide is a home plate in Babe Ruth baseball? 17 inches. Well, are there any high school baseball coaches? And of course, there were many. How wide is the plate in high school baseball? 17 inches. What about college coaches, minor league coaches? What about any major league coaches here today? How wide is a plate? 17 inches. So then Coach Scullin said, the home plate has been 17 inches forever. But now here's one thing that does not ever change. If a Major League Baseball player is having trouble throwing strikes, he may be making millions of dollars a year. That plate is never changed to suit his pitching style. No matter what goes on, it stays 17 inches. And then he held up this plate for, for them all to see and said this, Please understand that in the same way, this home plate is 17 inches. God's holy word has never changed. And I urge you, make sure you submit to God's unchanging moral standards and live your life in that kind of way. If we do that today, then we will be okay regardless of what goes on. We can use life wisely as we also learn to give ourselves away with no strings attached rather than being self-centered. James was speaking to businessmen who were totally self-centered. All they were concerned about was to do what they wanted to do when they wanted to do it. They thought they could live selfishly doing anything they pleased whenever they pleased. James urged them to understand the importance of doing God's will. Surely COVID-19 has reminded us of the importance of doing what God wants us to do. There's nothing as important as doing God's will. It's so easy to get caught up in self-centered living and just do what we please. COVID-19 would be a strong reminder to us that there's nothing comparable to doing God's will. If we want to live life as fully as we can and to use our lives wisely, be committed to God's will of learning to serve other people rather than thinking about yourself. There's much about God's will that I could not speak authoritatively on. But there's one thing I do know that's God's will for all of us, and that is for us as men to make sure we give ourselves away to our families with no strings attached. For years, Robert Schuler was pastor of the Crystal Cathedral Church in California, a very sought-after speaker, wrote books. He had just returned from a whirlwind book tour when his secretary reminded him that he had a luncheon engagement with someone who had purchased a, a raffle ticket to have lunch with him. When he looked at who the person was who had spent $500 on a raffle ticket to have lunch with him, he was shocked, for he knew that this person only had $500 in her bank account. What really shocked him was this person who spent $500 to be to have lunch with him was his own teenage daughter. Men, I urge you, if you want to do God's will, then make sure you give yourself away to your family with no strings attached and love them with all that you are. You bow with me in prayer. Father, we thank you in the midst of COVID-19 that you 
teach us ways to use our lives wisely. I pray for each of us that we'll love you with all that we are. We'll make sure we recommit ourselves to your moral standards. And above all else, we'll learn to do your will by giving ourselves away to those we love around us. In your holy name, amen.